Welcome to Divine Femme TV. My name is Sarah Rose and it is an honor and a blessing to be able to to serve the courageous souls that are part of this collective awakening into heart-centered unity consciousness. So that being said, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I would love it if you leave a review and consider joining us over on YouTube at Divine Femme TV, where you can connect, leave comments, and I personally try to respond to as many of those as possible. This message is for the wave of Divine Feminines that are earlier on in the journey and trying to figure it out. So... You've met your divine counterpart. They've activated you on this journey. A lot of weird stuff has been happening. A lot of synchronicity. A lot of painful separation, right? Your abandonment wound has been triggered. Your worthiness wound has been triggered. You feel left out in the cold. You feel betrayed. You most likely haven't even been treated very well, and yet you're finding yourself pining over this person, obsessing over this person 24-7 with your mind completely just spiraling, and it's to the point where you feel like you're going insane. And if you've been on this journey for a while, then you know that or I mean not even a while, just a little bit, then you already know that this is not normal. It's not a normal relationship, right? You've been through breakups before. You've been through bad breakups before. And you've never had something like this before. Nothing compares to the soul shock and the heartache and the pain and the sense of betrayal and the sense of loss and the void that you feel at the at the core of your soul and this is because you have met your soul yourself in another body so i'm going to shine some clarity on the situation just so If you're newer to this journey and you're open to it, it can help you go from suffering to divine sovereignty very quickly. If you're not open to it, that's fine. Everything is serving you, including your suffering. And it's all divinely guided anyway. So it's there's really, you either will resonate with this and take conscious action on it or you won't and either way is fine but that being said if you want to know what this journey is about and you landed on this video I don't presume that that is on accident so I'm just going to break it down in the simplest form you've met your soul in another body and they've activated your ascension journey. 99.9% of the twin flame videos out there are going to tell you it's about a romantic connection and treat it like it's a soulmate. And they are going to keep your focused awareness, your consciousness, and your attention on your divine counterpart. What your divine masculine is up to, what they are doing, what they are feeling, when they are coming back, what they're thinking about you, and yada yada. And your focus and your attention is going to be where? It's going to be outside of you. You're not going to be going inward. You're going to be seeking outside of yourself for external validation or approval or to fill that void So you no longer have to feel like crap. Because you are quite certain that if you could just have your twin flame back in your life experience or in partnership or relationship or whatever, then all of your pain and suffering and agony would go away. And you're going through a lot of painful 
agony, both emotionally and mentally. And so you just want it to stop, and that's obviously a natural thing, and you feel as if your twin flame is going to soothe you because it was there re- rejecting you that set it off. But what really happened is your soul came in, a.k.a. your twin flame, and triggered you so that you could see all the places within yourself that you feel unworthy um, or where you don't feel complete or where you don't feel lovable or where you don't feel good enough. And it ripped open your core wound of unworthiness and abandonment. And so the egoic mind that is starting to dissolve as a part of this process is grasping like a maniac at whatever it can to fill this perceived void and it's like an addict like you can't shut it off and the drug of choice is your twin flame so then you fall into this tarot reading trap where you are consistently being dangled the carrot of your twin flame in front of you and you're obsessing over this person and you're seeking externally outside of yourself and you're constantly projecting into the future some kind of timeline or some kind of outcome um you know holding on to your expectations and hope and everything for the future the next moment what's happening next how is this going to unfold and there is no next moment there is no future you are here now and this is the only the only thing that exists is now the mind projects into the future but It's just a projection. What you have is right now, the power of now. Just like Eckhart Tolle talks about. This is where your power lies. This is where you tap into your divine essence and pure beingness. The moment of now. So if you were to continue watching tarot videos that are completely capturing your focused awareness, which is really just focused consciousness, and you're keeping it outside of yourself on a separate person that really isn't even separate from you because it's just your soul in another body, or it's keeping your attention in the future on some projected outcome that you feel you need in order to feel better, what does this sound like to you? Does this sound healthy? Or does this sound like a major case of codependency and lack of standards for yourself? Does this sound like something that would be beneficial for you to partake in for a long or extended period of time? And again, it's going to happen. It's part of the journey because you're spiraling out of control. And so if that's what you're doing, there's no judgment here. We've all been there. I've been there. Tarot has played a certain role. You stumble upon it at the very beginning. And it shows you very quickly that what you're on is not a typical... What this is is not a typical relationship. And then simultaneously, it tries to treat it as if it's a soulmate connection. A soulmate connection is someone that you can match up with in this lifetime where it's two souls and they each are incarnated in in a body. It's not the same as a twin flame. And in a soulmate connection, you can talk things out. You can reason with them. You can, you know, be supported by them during your time of need. That doesn't happen with your twin flame. When you're coming from a lack of worthiness or low self-esteem or self-consciousness, this is key, self-consciousness, self-doubt, or any form of self-betrayal or self-abandonment, your twin flame does not come in and soothe you. 
they pour gasoline on that fire and they blow it up so that you have no choice but to see where you are still undivided within yourself because in truth you are a whole worthy and complete being and you are divine love at the core of your being but when you forget your true nature and you buy into the game of separation which we all do until we don't anymore you're going to see yourself as this separate self that is in the world that is trying to make your way through the world and you need to desperately get what you need in order to feel better and live your best life and the key words here are you and your life and get what you feel you need the real problem if there was a problem which there's it's not really a problem but the real situation is that there is no you that needs anything that is your separate sense of identity where you believe that you are the body or you believe that you are the mind and it's not that you're not the body or the mind it's that you are everything you are all things and the body mind vehicle exists within you and this will make more sense as you come to direct experience of your divine nature but for now if you could just suspend disbelief for a second or just ask yourself do you feel that you are the body and if you say yes to that let's explore it where are you in the body are you in your pinky toe are you in your leg your left leg are you in your right hand let me ask you if if you lost a limb would you still exist the answer is yes are you still fully there if you lost two limbs let's say would you still be there would you be less there or would you still be fully there yes you would still be there So you're not this body. If you were to go under anesthesia and go into surgery and have a complete organ transplant and all of your limbs removed and attached with new limbs, and I know this is kind of a gross metaphor, but I'm just trying to share with you something. If that were to happen and you were to wake back up from surgery, what part of you would still be here? Would you still be here? Don't ask the mind. Ask your heart. Ask your intuition. And so you may be saying, okay, Sarah, I'm not the body. I know I'm not the body. Maybe you've had an out-of-body experience. Maybe you've had, you know, you know, you've had moments where you realize that you're not the body. So maybe you think you're the mind. And so if I were to ask you where do you feel like you're located, you might point to the head, right? Because that's where thoughts tend to occur, right? There's like this spatial awareness of thoughts somewhere around the head, right? But the mind, when you say mind, what is mind really? mind our thoughts projections and memories primarily right so thoughts projections and memories 
Are those really you? Are you your thoughts? Are you your projections? Are you your memories? Or are you experiencing and aware of a thought? Are you aware of a memory? Are you aware that the mind is projecting? I think if you explore this for and do a little self-inquiry with this, you will see that you are not your mind. You are not these projections. You are not the thoughts. You are not the memories. So what's left? Are you the person you call yourself to be? Are you this personality? Because if you are and your personality has changed or shifted over time, what part was real? What part was you? If your your character and your character has shifted and evolved over time and maybe you're different than you were 20 years ago, what part was you? You could say that, well, you grow or change over time. And so you're this growing and changing, evolving person over time. Okay. Well, if you're growing and changing and evolving over time, I ask you, what part of you was aware of the person that you were back then? Were you aware that you're different then than you were than you are now what part of you is aware is it the same part of you back then that was aware that is aware right now So if your personality shifts over time and your character shifts over time, then that's not really you either. You are the awareness and the present that's always there through it all. Witnessing, being aware and conscious of the thoughts and the mind and the projections and the body and the memories and the personality and the character. You're not your name. If your name is Sarah, it could easily be Rebecca. And you wouldn't change at all. You would still be here. As the awareness that is listening to this right now. So... Your twin flame is that. Your twin flame is your soul in another body. The more you treat this like a relationship, like it's a romantic partnership or a soulmate connection, the more you will suffer. Because this journey is about transcending the dualistic mind that sees everything as separate and coming home to your heart your sacred heart where you are one with all of creation because that same awareness you just identified as you that same divine presence that is looking through your eyes right now and beating your heart and hearing these words is the same divine presence that animates all beings and all things that is your divine nature and your body does not contain it your body is contained within it your awareness is boundless it has no edge the entire cosmos exists within you this is your divine nature Separation is not possible. You 
will see on this journey that everything is backwards. And the reality that you think that you live in right now is really like love turned inside out. Where you think that you're this separate person and you need to go chase love. And in actuality, it's the exact opposite. That you are the love that you're actually chasing. And it actually comes to you when you be it. When you be it. Not when you do something to deserve it. When you be it. You can only be this love. And don't ask your mind to be it. Because your mind can't be it. Your mind is duality. Your mind sees everything in separation. Duality means two-ness. Meaning that there is an objective, an object-subject relationship with reality. Meaning there's a you and then there's something else outside of you. And as long as that's the case, you're operating from separation consciousness. So the more that you see or chase your twin flame, which is outside of you, the more essentially that you are just basically running from your true self. You're running away from your divine nature, in a sense, and seeking out the love that you are, which is your divine nature outside of you. And as the divine mirror that your twin flame is, they are going to reflect that back to you. So if you're running from your divine nature, guess who's running from you? Because they are you. They can only mirror back to you the degree to which you have met yourself, your true divine nature. So if you really want to shift out of suffering into divine sovereignty on this journey, you have to see through the smoke and mirrors of the narrative that the twin flame journey is trying to force feed you that makes this about a separate person outside of yourself that can complete you or fulfill you in some way. There couldn't be anything further from the truth. And anything that keeps your focused awareness, your consciousness, your power outside of you and on what this other person is doing or not doing or thinking or feeling or not thinking or feeling or whatever, you are going to suffer on this journey greatly and you're going to stay looping in cycles of, of toxicity and suffering because you're not yet willing to turn the mirror back on yourself and begin the journey home to yourself. And I shouldn't say that exactly because you've already, your soul is already elected to start this journey. So this chariot is in motion. You're not getting off this train. It's moving forward whether you like it or not. This is your forced ascension. There's no getting off this journey. The only thing you can do on this journey is surrender to it. And surrender is going to be a theme or concept throughout this journey until it is no longer a concept and also just fully a way of living and being. And you're going to surrender a lot on this journey, starting with the expectations you have around your twin flame divine counterpart. This journey is a blessing. It's one of the most beautiful blessings you will ever experience. And if you are hearing this right now and you were thinking the exact opposite of that, that's completely normal. But from one divine feminine to another, I can share with you that this journey is your greatest gift. The twin flame 
catalyst is your greatest gift. And you're going to be guided on this journey to trust in yourself and trust in your knowing. You're going to be challenged with doubt on this journey. You're going to doubt whether you're even on this journey. It's going to be so challenging at times. You have to trust in the knowing in your heart. Remember... Your divine counterpart, your divine mirror, can only reflect back to you to the degree that you have met yourself. You are going to be guided back to your heart over and over and over again on this journey to trust in yourself, trust in the divine, trust in your heart, surrender to what is in the highest and greatest good. And I know that that sounds really hard to do at the beginning. But what other choice do you have? Surrender is what's going to bring you peace on this journey. And when you begin to surrender, that's when the journey shifts. And you start to shift into your power. You start to shift into your purpose and your dharma. And you start to shift into your most authentic timeline. And you're living your best life with or without your twin flame in your life experience. And that's when they show up. And if you try to make this journey about that, it doesn't work. You can't trick the universe. This has to be about your own soul ascension. You have to be willing to surrender to the divine orchestration of your life. And then you'll have to surrender your life itself because there never was a little you to begin with.